we're going to call the meeting to order. It's exactly 10 o'clock. And uh, if you would just join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. To the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Public notice, Madam Secretary. As the public notice has been given pursuant to the Open Public Meetings Act, notice has been posted at the board's office and website, emailed to the Department of State, and to newspapers of our circulation within the state. Roll call, please. Commissioner Holden? Here. Commissioner Solomon? Here. Commissioner Shukula? Yes. President Ferguson? Yes. And as you notice, Commissioner Gordon is not with us today. And um, what is our next regularly scheduled meeting? Our next regular board meeting will be live streamed via YouTube on Wednesday, April 6, 2022, at 10 a.m. And my understanding is that there will be somebody else sitting in that seat where you're sitting, is that right? That's what I hear. Yeah. <laughs> uh, there will be no executive session today. Um, but I do want to make mention for any of those folks who are listening uh, via the stream uh, that the public is invited uh, with the relaxed um, restrictions in, in, in the world of COVID. The uh, public is invited to rejoin us in person um, at our next meeting. Actually, it started today. Um, I don't know if a notice was sent out regarding that, but it is, it's important anyone who wants to come, feel free to come. Anyone who wants to watch us via the stream, we have a great crew here who takes care of us very well uh, regarding that. And uh, so please feel free to uh, participate in person. Uh, <clears throat> it is spring, uh, thank goodness we got through winter. And uh, it, uh, you can just feel us spring feeling, can't you, a little bit? Somewhere. <laughs> the weather hasn't been terribly uh, cold, though, has it? No, it's been pretty good. <clears throat> I, I just want to mention uh, uh, one thing, that uh, we got some pretty good press on this. Uh, on Monday in Asbury Park, which I want to mention, uh, if you haven't been to Asbury Park of late, they have done magnificent uh, work in that city to really enhance uh, that uh, shore town. And I was so pleasantly surprised to see the wonderful additions to that city. And um, it was the first time, believe it or not, uh, I've been to Asbury Park before, but not in years. But it was the first time that I actually went out of my way to see the stone pony. And I sat there for hours waiting for Bruce Springsteen. He didn't show up. So, yes, he told me he'd be there, but he, I guess he forgot. Um, at, at the event in Asbury Park, we announced the uh, grant award recipients for the electric vehicle tourism program, uh, providing charging infrastructure grants for tourist destinations across the state of New Jersey. Um, and round two of the program is now open until May 16th. Details are available on njcleanenergy.com slash EV. Um, and I, I want to emphasize the fact that it's not only for the shore area, because New Jersey is known for our beautiful coastline and the many shore communities that provide an awful lot of fun and entertainment to all of us and to tourists from out of state. 
But we also have to remember that here in the state of New Jersey, we are the crossroads of the American Revolution. We have so many wonderful historic sites. And there will be charging stations at these historic sites also. So it's important that we publicize, that we promote the wonderful things that we have. And not too far from any of us. And uh, I mean, we're sitting in a city where a very important battle of the revolution occurred. And uh, one of the iconic uh, photos, not photos, paintings, of Washington crossing the Delaware into Trenton for the Battle of Trenton. So it's really an exciting state and one that each and every one of us has an obligation to promote. As I mentioned before, and I'm going to have more to say later, um, jokingly to our Board Secretary, Ada, this is Ada's final meeting as Board Secretary. Ada will be retiring. Uh, at the age of 35, and um, I told her she might be just a little too young to do that, but she uh, will be retired, but we'll have more to say about Ada later. Do any of my colleagues wish to make any opening remarks? Yes. <clears throat> I'll save my comments for Ada later as well. <laughs> But I want to say that perhaps we should use our slogan is get a charge out of our history. Get a charge out of our history. There you go. <laughs> I like that. <clears throat> Anyone else? Any comments? And here again, I have to remind you of the consent agenda, because you always forget. It only took you four years to do that. <laughs> <laughs> On the following consent agenda items, 1A, 3A, 6A, and 9A. So moved. Second. Roll call. Commissioner Holden? Yes. Commissioner Solomon? Yes. Commissioner Shakula? Yes. President Ferguson? Yes. Uh, we'll now proceed with the regular agenda. Uh, there are no items under audits, so we're going to go directly. <coughs> Excuse me directly to Andrew and Paul. I guess you're the one up. Yes, good morning. Good morning, how are you today? Doing well, and yourself? Good, thank you. On November 1st, 2021, ACE filed a petition seeking review and approval for the cost recovery associated with its infrastructure investment program. Based upon actual information through September 2021, and estimated expenditures through December 2021, the company sought approval to recover a revenue requirement of approximately $2.2 million related to the IIP investments. In January, the company provided an update to include actual expenditures through December 2021, reflecting a decrease in the proposed revenue requirement of $2.1 million. The parties have executed a stipulation that would allow the company to recover the updated revenue requirement. As a result of the stipulation, a typical residential customer will see a monthly increase of approximately 22 cents. Staff recommends the board issue an order adopting the stipulation and directing ACE to file tariffs by March 31st. So moved. Second. Questions, comments? Okay. On the motion to approve staff recommendation, Commissioner Holden? Yes. Commissioner Solomon? Yes. Commissioner Shokula? Yes. President Perlisa? Yes. Uh, that brings us to 2B, also an ACE item. Yes. On February 2nd, Cumberland County Improvement Authority filed a petition seeking approval for the extension or expansion of electric public utility facilities of Atlantic City Electric. I'm going to refer to Cumberland County Improvement Authority as CCIA. CCIA also requested that ACE refund the proposed expansion or extension. 
According to the petition, CCIA developed an economic development strategic plan for Cumberland County. CCIA described this plan as the competitive development of infrastructure, which includes prioritized development locations, along with the right buildings and communication networks and electric public utility facilities that allow businesses to function and grow, improving economic opportunity for residents. On February 17th, ACE filed a motion to intervene in this matter, arguing that they have substantial, specific, and direct interests as it relates to this matter and its outcome. On March 3rd, Rate Council filed a letter of no objection to ACE's motion to intervene. Staff recommends the following. The board retain this matter for hearing at the board, designate a presiding commissioner, set a bar date of April 6th for the filing of motions to intervene and or participate, and for admission pro pace vici, and grant ACE's motion to intervene in this matter. The um, presiding commissioner, I'm going to appoint since he's not here, Commissioner Gordon. <laughs> no, I, I talked to him about it. I'm, I'm joking, obviously. Uh, and he will be the presiding commissioner on this item. Any questions or comments? <laughs> Wish and, I and you did very well with that. Uh, different language <laughs> definitely fumbled it but thank you <laughs> not an attorney um roll call on the motion to approve staff recommendation commissioner holden yes commissioner solomon yes commissioner shukula yes president Trudy yes and paul uh to see involving e-town sure on june 1st 2021 elizabeth town filed a petition with the board seeking authority to increase its per therm periodic BGSS rate from 0 0.3783 to 0 0.4367 for the period October 1 through September 30, 2022. Through discussions, Elizabethtown informed the parties it was updating its request to a lower per therm rate. In November 2021, the board issued an order which authorized the company to implement that lower per therm BGSS rate on a provisional basis effective December 1st. As a result of that order, the monthly bill of a residential heating customer using 100 therms was expected to increase by $4.71. On November 18th, Elizabethtown filed a notice with the board of its intent to self-implement a periodic BGSS rate adjustment based on a 5% increase of the monthly bill of a typical residential customer using 100 therms effective December 1st. As a result of that notice, the per therm periodic BGSS rate was updated on a provisional basis. As a result, the monthly bill impact for residential heating customer using 100 therms was expected to increase by $4.44 in addition to the impact from the provisional order. The parties have now executed a stipulation requesting the board approved the provisionally approved BGS rate on a final basis, which was subsequently approved by ALJ Irene Jones. As a result of this stipulation, there is no additional bill impact on ratepayers. Staff recommends the board issue an order adopting the initial decision and stipulation and direct Elizabethtown to file revised tariffs by April 1. So moved. Second. Questions, comments? Uh, this is glad to Mr. President. Is it 4.71 or 4.4? The monthly bill impact? Yeah. $4.71 was on the uh, the provisional basis based upon the petition. $4.71 and then with the the notice, the self-implementing, it was $5.44. Any other questions, comments? Okay. Uh, 
Roll call. On the motion to approve staff's recommendation, Commissioner Holden? Yes. Commissioner Solomon? Yes. Commissioner Shapula? Yes. President Grimisa? Yes. Uh, and uh, 2D, Paul, New Jersey Natural? Sure. On September 30th, New Jersey Natural filed a petition requesting approval to change rates for two components of its societal benefits charge, the remediation adjustment and the New Jersey Clean Energy Program. In the petition, New Jersey Natural sought approval to increase the per therm RA rate and decrease the per therm NJCEP rate. Additionally, the petition sought approval of the remediation expenditures incurred by the company from July 1, 2020 through June 30, 2021. In response to discovery, New Jersey Natural updated the schedules in the petition to reflect actual data through December 31st. The updated RA revenue requirement is approximately $11.6 million and the updated NJCEP revenue requirement is approximately $17.287 million. The parties have executed a stipulation which would allow New Jersey Natural to implement the modified rates based upon the update. As a result of that stipulation, the annual bill impact on a typical residential customer is a decrease of $3.30. Staff recommends the board issue an order approving the stipulation and directing New Jersey Natural to file revised tariffs by March 31st. So moved. Second. Questions, comments? On the motion to approve staff's recommendation, Commissioner Holden? Yes. Commissioner Solomon? Yes. Commissioner Shapula? Yes. President Cronisa? Yes. Um, to e uh, Atlantic City Electric. On November 1st, ACE filed a petition seeking review and approval of the capital investments related to the company's Power Ahead program that were placed into service from July through December 2021. In the petition, ACE sought to recover a revenue requirement of approximately $890,000 based upon actual information through December through September 2021. The company has provided a subsequent update to provide actual information through December 2021, which supports a revenue requirement of approximately $882,000. The parties have executed a stipulation that would allow the company to recover the updated revenue requirement. As a result of the stipulation, a typical residential customer will see a monthly increase of approximately 10 cents. Staff recommends the board issue an order approving the stipulation and directing ACE to file revised tariffs by March 31st. So moved. Second. Questions, comments? Uh, thank you, Mr. President. Paul, I just have a question about this undergrounding. Uh, selective undergrounding, it says $11 million, and that's a short distance probably, right? I mean, you know where that is? And, uh, I can get back to you on the selective okay. undergrounding. Uh, thank you. You're welcome. Any other questions, comments? Roll, roll call. On the motion to approve staff's recommendation, Commissioner Holden? Yes. Commissioner Solomon? Yes. Commissioner Shibakula? Yes. President Grimisa? Yes. Uh, 2E, also ACE. Uh, I'm sorry, 2F. Thank you. I got my alphabet up. Me too. <laughs> uh, on December 22nd, ACE filed a petition seeking approval of settlement agreements between ACE and Chambers Co-Generation Limited Partnership an ACE and Logan Generating Company, LP, as well as modifying existing power purchase agreements such that existing interconnection rights would be preserved, but coal-fired electric generation would cease, and terminate existing power sales agreements with Chambers and Logan, respectively. In the petition, 
A stated that it will make a series of negotiated fixed monthly payments for the remaining term of the existing PPAs and PSAs, which will be partially offset by customer benefit payments from Chambers and Logan. On January 26th, Chambers and Logan submitted comments in support of the petition and urged the board to grant the relief sought on an expedited schedule. On February 9th, the Sierra Club, 350 NJ Rockland in Environment, New Jersey, submitted joint comments in support of the petition. On March 7th, Rate Council submitted comments indicating that it did not oppose ACE's proposed contract modification as ACE's ratepayers would have the opportunity to potentially see reduced payments relative to the current PPAs and PSAs. Rate Council expressed concern that the environmental benefits associated with the proposed transaction will be reduced with the option to repower the coal fire generation with new gas fire generation and that the just and reasonableness of the payments set forth in the settlement agreements is uncertain due to the timing of the closing and future energy and capacity prices. Rate Council recommended that ACE be required to track how much revenue would have been earned had ACE continued to sell capacity and energy into the PJM markets rather than enter into these agreements. On March 11th, ACE submitted reply comments stating that there was no opposition to its proposed transaction by any party. ACE asserted that its request fully satisfied the applicable standard of review codified at NJSA 48 colon 3 hyphen 61 L1. Additionally, ACE took exception with Rate Council's reporting recommendation, arguing that it would be impossible to provide Rate Council's requested analysis and that such a condition could undermine the transaction. Board staff recommends the following. The board issue an order approving the settlement agreements and modified PPAs, direct ACE to collaborate with staff and rate council within the company's current non-utility generation proceeding or their NGC proceeding, docket number ER 22020038, and developing information to be filed in future NGC matters that will assist staff and rate council in evaluating the effectiveness, cost effectiveness of the transaction. And the board direct ACE to submit relevant information, including updates on the closing of the PPA modification and PSA termination, the final payments and benefits, the cessation of coal fired electric generation at the plants, and the use of natural gas fired boilers at the chamber's plant. So moved. Second. Questions, comments? The modification agreement are uh, great news for all of us. And with all due respect to Ray Council uh, and anyone else who in any way objected to this, I have to disagree with them. Because at long last, we are ending coal generation in the state of New Jersey. That is a huge step forward. The Energy Master Plan is geared toward dramatically reducing greenhouse gas emissions. And by not having coal generated energy in the state of New Jersey anymore, it is a day, not to be dramatic, but a day to celebrate. Because we are moving in the right direction. There, there was a 
controversy uh, in OPSI, Organization of Patriot States, that's our RTO, Regional Transmission Organization, about a letter being sent to PJM. And the letter included the word clean. Clean. And some of my colleagues on OPSI objected to the word clean being in the letter. It was the first time I came to the realization that the word clean was actually a dirty word for some people. That's what we're striving for. We're striving for clean air. We're striving to mitigate the effects of climate change. Coal, unfortunately, is not a step in that direction. Are we ready to transfer over to all clean energy? No, not yet. That's why we need gas, natural gas, at this point. That's why we need our nukes. That's why we need other forms of generation. We have to be realistic and prudent in the approach that we take in moving New Jersey into an era of clean energy to mitigate the effects of climate change and to ensure future generations a livable earth. Any other comments? Questions? Roll call. On the motion to approve staff recommendation, Commissioner Holden? Yes. Commissioner Solomon? Yes. Commissioner Shabukula? Yes. President Perlisa? Yes. And the final one, Paul? Sure. On April 23rd, Elizabethtown filed a petition seeking approval of an extension of the asset management and agency agreement between Elizabethtown and its affiliate, South Jersey Resources Group, for a five year period beginning April 1st, 2022 through March 31st, 2027. In the petition and under the proposed AMA, South Jersey Resources Group would provide Elizabethtown with gas supply and asset management services using Elizabethtown's portfolio of firm transportation and storage contracts with interstate pipelines and storage service providers. Following further review and discussions, the parties executed a stipulation that would extend the AMA for two years beginning April 1st, 2022, with a transition of the full transmission, full administration of the gas supply asset management function back to Elizabethtown by April 1st, 2024. Some key elements of the stipulation include beginning April 1st, 2022, Elizabethtown will start to transition the full administration of its gas supply asset management function back in-house and will resume full responsibility for the functions by April 1st, 2024. South Jersey Resources will pay an annual fee for the right to act as Elizabethtown's gas supplier and capacity management agent during the term of the AMA. Elizabethtown will credit the entire fee to its basic gas supply service periodic clause. Staff recommends the following, that the board issue an order approving the stipulation, that a determination regarding confidential treatment of the pro forma agreements in Appendix A of the stipulation, which are claimed to be confident, uh, commercially sensitive or proprietary, be decided by the board's custodian of records pursuant to the board's rules. Until a decision is rendered, such information should continue to be treated as confidential information. So moved. Questions, comments? Roll call. On the motion to approve staff recommendation, Commissioner Molden? 
Yes. Commissioner Solomon? Yes. Commissioner Shibakula? Yes. President Fiori Solomon? Yes. Thank you, Paul. Thank you. There are no items under uh, cable television or telecommunications to be considered at this time. That brings us to water. And our chief economist is going to present on behalf of water. And uh, aqua involves aqua. Yes. Yes. Good morning, Mr. President and Good Commissioners. Morning. Item 5A addresses a joint petition filed on August 13th, 2021 by Aqua New Jersey Inc. and Aqua Water Holdings Inc. Seeking approval on two items. First, a change of control of Aqua New Jersey resulting from a corporate restructuring following from a merger of former parent company Aqua America with People's Gas Company in 2020. Second, an updated affiliate agreement between Aqua New Jersey and Aqua Services Inc. to obtain services from the new parent company's service unit essential services. Aqua New Jersey serves about 55,000 water customers and 6,500 wastewater customers in New Jersey. The new parent company resulting from the 2020 merger, Essential Utilities, serves approximately 5 million gas, water, and wastewater customers across 10 states in the Mid-Atlantic and Midwest. In late February, the parties in this matter reached the settlement agreement. The key terms of that agreement include the requested change of control of Aqua, New Jersey, the updated affiliate agreement for services as just referenced. In addition, the following positive benefits are also noted. A contribution of $10,000 per year for three years from Aqua New Jersey to the NJ Shares program, and a contribution of $150,000 toward the company's COVID-19 arrearages balance. The parties have submitted a stipulation of settlement detailing the agreement. Board staff from both the Division of Water, thank you Mike Cameron, and staff and the Economist's Office reviewed the stipulation of settlement and staff recommends that the board approve the final stipulation of settlement as submitted. So, second. Questions, comments? I, I think, uh, 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 it was a very nice job, you know, it's like a tail wagging the dog. And we were able to get the best deal possible for New Jersey. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? Oh, go on. I have a motion to approve staff's recommendation. Commissioner Holden? Yes. Commissioner Solomon? Yes. Commissioner Shibakula? Yes. President Bureau Yes. Thank you, Ben. Thank you. Michael, you have now, for those of you who might have missed this, um, my camera is one of our longest serving um, employees here at the BPU. And uh, has always been willing to step up for the good of the agency when we needed him. And uh, Mike will be overseeing not only the water division, but also the energy division. We anticipate this to be temporary, but many times temporary extends beyond temporary, if that makes sense, and, uh, and, and so on. So I just wanted to publicly thank you, Michael, for assuming that additional responsibility, and uh, you know you have our full support, and uh, we're always here to have your back. Thank you, I'm looking forward to the challenge. Good. <laughs> uh, good morning, Mr. President and Commissioners. Good morning, Mike. Uh, on November 15th, 2021, New Jersey American Water Company filed a petition seeking to change the levels of its existing purchased water adjustment clause and its existing purchased sewage treatment adjustment clause to recover increased purchased water costs and increased purchase wastewater treatment expenses. The amount requested in the petition would increase the company's annual revenues by $934,000 or approximately 0.13% above total revenues. 
The matter was transmitted to the Office of Administrative Law for hearings and was assigned to Administrative Law Judge Tricia M. Caliguire. ALJ Caliguire presided over a virtual public hearing via Zoom on March 3rd, 2022, due to the ongoing COVID-19 pandemic. No members of the public appear at, at the virtual public hearing and no written comments have been received by the board. Subsequent to the public hearing and following a review of the petition and dis exchanging discovery, New Jersey American, the Division of Rate Council and board staff executed a stipulation of settlement agreeing to the overall increase in revenues requested by the petition. Middlesex Water Company, which purchases water from New Jersey American, was granted intervener status by ALJ Caliguire, submitted a letter stating that they do not object to the stipulation. ALJ Caliguire issued an initial decision recommending that the board adopt the stipulation. Staff recommends that the board adopt the initial decision and stipulation for service rendered on and after April 1st, 2022. Staff further recommends that the board direct New Jersey American to file revised tariffs by April 1st, 2022. So moved. Second. Questions, comments from my local. And the motion to approve staff's recommendation, Commissioner Holden? Yes. Commissioner Solomon? Yes. Commissioner Shapula? Yes. President Carlisa? Yes. Thank you, Michael. Thank you. Uh, there are no items under reliability and security for consideration. That brings us to customer assistance. And Julie Ford, uh, who is also one of our longest serving employees. Yes. She started here at six years old. I sure did. <laughs> I sure did. That was child labor. <laughs> Good morning, President Commissioners. Good morning, Julie. Item 7A is a billing dispute between Jasper Singh and E-Town Gas, which was transmitted to the OAL and assigned to ALJ William T. Cooper III. Mr. Singh alleges that ETG incorrectly billed his account from February 2020 through March 2021 in the amount of $928.75 for estimated gas services. ETG in its answers denies the allegations, noting on March 27, the billing department discovered a reading discrepancy for Mr. Singh's meter. The meter was verified functioning and was recording gas usage at the residence. However, the ERT was not transmitting the usage information to ETG for billing purposes. Mr. Singh had not received a bill from February 21, 2020 through March 23rd, 2021. On March 23rd, the meter was changed and the ETG technician recorded a final reading. A cumulative bill was generated in the amount of $928.75 based on six verified intermittent readings from February 2020 to, to January 21st, 2021, and estimated readings for the months when the readings were not being transmitted from the ERT. In his initial decision, ALJ Cooper concluded the meter removed from Mr. Singh's home on March 23, 2021 was accurate in its recording usage at the, re at the residence from February 2020 through March 2021. He further concluded that the bill of $928.75 was also accurate. ALJ Cooper stated Mr. Singh failed to provide any legally competent evidence to support that the final reading obtained was inaccurate. The ALJ ordered the requested relief in this matter be denied and the matter be dismissed. <laughs> Staff has completed its review of the petition, the answer, and the initial decision and recommends that the board adopt the initial decision dismissing the petition in this matter. So moved. Second. Questions, comments, or Julie? Local. On the motion to approve staff's recommendation, Commissioner Holden? Yes. Commissioner Solomon? Yes. Commissioner Shibakula? Yes. President Carlisa? Yes. Thank you, Julie. Thank you. Uh, there are no items under clean energy uh, for consideration. That brings us to miscellaneous. Heather, hi. Hi, how are you? And 
this uh, regards the acting custodian of records. And secretary, sir. Yes. It's good to see you. It is good to see you, too. Good morning, Mr. President and commissioners. This is certainly a bit bittersweet. After approximately 33 years of service, Board Secretary Ada Camacho Welsh will retire on April 1st, 2022. And as such, on that date, the positions of Board Secretary and Custodian of Records will be vacant. The law actually does provide some guidance regarding whom the board may designate in those positions. Uh, with regard to Board Secretary, the law provides that the Assistant Secretary may assume the duties of the board secretary in the board secretary's absence. Additionally, the law further provides that the board, you may designate a custodian to oversee access to public documents under the Open Public Records Act or OPRA. As such, staff recommends that the board authorize Assistant Board Secretary Carmen Diaz to assume the role of Acting Board Secretary beginning April 1st, 2022, and staff further recommends that the board authorize Assistant Board Secretary Carmen Diaz to assume the role of Acting Custodian of Records to oversee public access to documents under OPRA beginning April 1st, 2022. Oh. Any questions or comments? I see comments in the back there. <laughs> Looking very happy. <laughs> Ada? No. Oh. No. I have a motion to approve staff's recommendation. Commissioner Holton? Yes. Commissioner Solomon? Mr. Shakula? Yes. President Bailey, Yes. Um, thank you, Heather. My pleasure. Uh, thank you, Ada, for everything. I, the the, the rest, rest of this meeting is going to be devoted uh, to Ada Camacho Welch, a person who, well, let, let, let me preface it by saying, Ever since I've been here, which is a few years, the board secretary, in many instances, not all, has been really a political appointment, to be honest about it, and, uh, and, and so on. To my recollection, Ada is the first one, and if I'm wrong, you tell me. I know you will. <laughs> to come up with the ranks. Starting out as an administrative assistant and so on, and learned the job so well that every board secretary who was appointed since eight has been around relied on her to kind of steer the ship. When our previous board secretary left, there was never a doubt in my mind who the board secretary should be. It should be a person, a long time board employee who knew the job inside out and would perform the duties of board secretary like no other. She began her job here at the board in 1989, where she served, as I said, as administrator. I have written words, but a lot of it I'm going to skip because most of it's coming from here. Um, administrative assistant in the office of cable TV. And then in 2003, moved to the office of the secretary, where she assisted the secretary. And in 2018, was promoted to secretary of the board 
and she started her career as secretary of the board officially. Because in essence, she was the secretary of the board before that. Maybe not technically, but as I said, she kept the ship afloat. Besides that, Ada is a good person. And I don't know about you, but when the time comes, all I want on my tombstone is, he was a good person. What a better thing can they say about a human being other than the fact that they are a good person? And she fits that term perfectly. She and her husband worked together here with the board. He retired. And I knew in the back of my head that her retirement wasn't far behind. And it's the kind of thing that they are both young enough to enjoy a long and happy retirement. But Ada, you will always be a part of the Board of Public Utilities. You always have a home here. If Kenny ever throws you out or something. <laughs> <laughs> or you throw him out. I don't know. <laughs> but it's with a heavy heart, I know for all of us, because as the president of the board, I never had to worry about what was coming out of the board secretary's office. Because I knew that Ada was in charge, and I knew that it was going to be right. She had a high expectation of herself, and always wanted to do the best job possible. And if she ever thought she didn't, there was hell to pay on the tenth floor. Because she expected perfection from herself. So you never had to worry. You never had to really check Ada. Because you knew it was right. And of course, she had wonderful staff, too, that has helped her along the way. Ada, I will personally miss you. And I am so happy, though, that you and Kenny have decided to move to Livingston. <laughs> I'm glad you're not too close to me because I don't like Kenny. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, the New Jersey Board of Public Utilities, and that I'll give my colleagues a chance. And we have this for you, which I'm not going to read except for the last part. The New Jersey Board of Public Utilities hereby resolves to recognize Ada Camacho Welch for her past accomplishments. Hereby commends her for her significant contributions to this board and to the citizens of New Jersey. And we have so many employees in this agency that the citizens of New Jersey don't know how great they are. And that's what hurts me when I see such criticism of state employees. We have so many dedicated people who go above and beyond. And by the affixed signatures, hereby offers our collective best wishes for her continued success in her future endeavors. And again, we wish you a long and happy
retired. And uh, any of my colleagues? Yes. Few um, people could handle the pressure that the pandemic brought to the board. And to seamlessly, at least to those on the outside, it seems seamless and it been hectic to you, Ava, but uh, to be able to set up, well, we're going to go on Teams and we're going to uh, Zoom and, and running back and forth, but it, it looked perfect to everyone else on the outside. Um, you know, a lot of agencies have taken criticism uh, during the pandemic and probably rightly so. This agency kept working and taking advantage of the fact that they've not really had time on their hands, but you know, not spending time traveling down to Trenton. But instead, Ada and her staff took all of the records and put them and digitized them. And I often laugh when the legislature says, you know, you have to do that. And I'm like, well, Ada already did it. <laughs> and, uh, that is quite an accomplishment, and it just moved this agency light years forward. And our employees, as you said, should be recognized for the time that they put in during the pandemic. Almost like it was any other day, except they did more. And more of their share. And Ada, I couldn't be more proud to know you. I know you and Rusty, and you know, we'll be dancing there <laughs> in uh, Livingston. Um, you, have to take Kenny, you have to take Kenny with you, but, no. you know, <laughs> but I, I just love working with you, and uh, you've done a great job with it, the, the boardroom, the, all the new digs you have next door, the little cafeteria, as it were. Um, you know, a lot of that was your thought and input into these things. So thank you for your time here at the board. and especially the last two years as, as board secretary, and somebody who knows how to bring a motion to the table. So, <laughs> thank you so much. Yes. Uh, thank you, Mr. President. I think Eda, uh, amazing, you are very professional. Uh, I have noticed and uh, 30 years is a long time in one's life, uh, commuting to work and uh, commuting back and uh, dealing with all the things. One question I have is that, uh, how many opera requests you have handled during the 30 years? <laughs> you don't have to answer that, but uh, it is uh, it's a tremendous amount of uh, pressure and uh, the public wants to know what's going on and ask uh, for the records, you know, keeping track of all the records, keeping track of all the commissioners, where they have been, what they have done, and it itself is monumental work. Uh, but uh, I have not seen you get angry at, 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 with me, so. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, you all this. Uh, we have to get your paperwork down. <laughs> <laughs> I have done that two times. Yeah. She, 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 she did not. Uh, I keep track of how many times we went up. I did that two times. And, um, but, um, yeah, I think uh, we're going to miss you, but I think uh, you deserve, you know, uh, well uh, rested vacation. Uh, however wrong, you know, I think uh, we're always uh, we'll be in our hearts. Thank you, and God bless you. Thank you. Uh, uh, Joe, you mentioned how you know the uh, position of board secretary is a lot of times a political appointment, and uh, it really, uh, you know, shouldn't be subject to the. Uh, Wilds or whatever of political appointments because it's such an important role for for this board and that was something that I know when I came to the board and even uh, actually when my uh, husband uh, was here you know one of the things they tried to get him to do was to change the secretary at the time he said no way because we need to keep this uh, board running and I know how much I helped you were to Christy Izzo when she served in that role in you know. A, Likewise, a superior uh, way, and um, it, you just can't have an operation of an agency like this, you know, at the whims of uh, political winds. Uh, when you uh, 
need to stay up at that level. So you know, we have been so lucky that you have, have you know risen through the ranks and stepped into that role and uh, taken it on with uh, you know such grace, frank, frankly. And uh, I knew when you uh, turned over those two uh, sweaters to me that it, evidently you were getting rid of your wardrobe for work <laughs> and moving on. And I knew that it was, you know, definitely a phase of conflict. Uh, I can't say anything more than everyone has uh, already stated, but I would like, and I think we should all give you a standing ovation. Thank you. Thank you. 